Hello, this is Chris Jewett from Extreme Flight RC. I'm excited to be doing the build video for the 104 inch Extra today. I'm going to break the video down into several segments. The first segment is going to be assembling the wings and the stabs. Let's get started. These boxes are packed like we used to pack containers for airdrop in the Air Force. Extreme Flight did a great job on these. First we're going to start by removing the aileron. We're going to take this little piece of tape off of the end here and then we're going to remove the aileron and pull out all of the hinges. Here I'm taking a second to seal all of the seams on the wing and the aileron with a covering iron and then shrinking up any loose covering. This is a technique to ensure that you can get maximum throw on your control surfaces. What we're going to do is take a tapered reamer and ream out just the first portion of the hinge hole where the knuckle of the hinge resides. Freeing up a little space in this area will allow the hinge to move freely after it has been glued in place and the hinge gap has been set. After you've reamed out a little bit of wood, come back with your knife and make sure the covering is cleaned up around the hole. This extra little gap around the knuckle of the hinge will ensure free and clear movement of the hinges after they have been set. Here I'm using a little tri-flow oil to keep the glue from sticking to the hinge knuckles as we insert them. I've mixed up some 30 minute epoxy. If you've never done this before you might want to use one hour epoxy on this step. I'm using a carbon rod to get glue into each of the hinge holes that I've already prepared using the reamer method that I've shown before. After you've fully wetted out each of the hinge holes in the aileron, grab one of the hinges and get a little bit of glue onto the threads. Insert them into the hole and twist them around to evenly distribute that glue, but do not put them in all the way. After you've partially inserted all of the hinges, grab a dry paper towel and clean up any of the glue that has come out around the hinges. Once you have cleaned up the glue, push the hinges down to where the hinge pin is in line with the highest point of the bevel on the aileron. Make sure the hinges are bent over 90 degrees and are sticking up vertically 90 degrees as I will show you in a second. After you've pushed in all the hinges, come back with some rubbing alcohol on a clean paper towel and clean up the area around the knuckles of the hinges and any other glue you might have gotten on the aileron. Spend a good portion of the time here cleaning the knuckles of the hinges to make sure they are free of glue. Once you've got the hinges cleaned up and positioned how you would like them, it's time to set the aileron aside to dry. Here I'm marking the areas to cut for the aileron servo holes. A sharp and hot number 11 blade will cut through several layers of ultra coat with no problem. After you've cut out the holes, take some time to go through all of the servo mounting brackets inside of the wing with thin CA. Now that the hinges that we put in the ailerons earlier have dried, I am wetting out the hinge holes on the wing side. Ah! 
and now we will put some epoxy on the exposed hinge ends on the aileron side. When installing the aileron, start at the outboard end and put in one hinge at a time working towards the inboard end. Remember not to push the hinges in all the way as we'll come back and clean up the epoxy before we finally seat the hinges. Again, after you've finally seated the hinges, come back and clean up the hinge gaps and the hinge knuckles with alcohol and paper towel. This is a good time to get any epoxy fingerprints off of the wing too, so be looking other places than just the hinge slot. Setting your hinge gap. As you move the control surface to full throw, the hinge gap will separate a little. After you've reached the bevel, they will start to pull out. You want to set your gap to the point to just right before they start to pull out. Make that gap the full length of the wing and check each hinge against that test. After you're happy with the hinge gap across the whole length of the wing, Use some masking tape to hold the aileron in place and set the wing aside to dry overnight. After both wings have been hinged and dried, it's time to assemble the aileron control horn. It's important to note that there are two different control horns. The one with the hole on the top is the outboard control horn and one with the hole in the middle is the inboard control horn. Scuff up the tabs on the control horns and assemble the control horn assemblies for the ailerons. Use your covering iron to find the slots for the control horns and open them up with a sharp knife. After you've inserted the control horns, mark around the outside of the square plate to show you where to cut out the covering before you glue them down. And using a sharp hot knife, we're going to cut just through the covering and not into the balsa to remove a square of covering underneath that plate. Alcohol will remove any ink marks on the covering. After you've cleaned up the control horns on the surface with alcohol, fill up the control horn slots with epoxy.
and then use copious amounts of epoxy on the control horns. Make sure you cover the tabs, the holes in the tabs, and the flat plate. Make sure it's fully soaked. After you've cleaned up the epoxy around the hinges, you want to make sure that they're fully seated and sitting level and flush on the aileron. Then insert a bolt to keep them in place while they dry. While we're waiting for the wings to dry, it's a good opportunity to start getting your servos ready to install. I'm putting on the correct control horn for each servo. I'm labeling the servo for its position and putting a label on each lead for where it should go on the receiver and doing the mixing necessary for four aileron servos and two elevator servos. In this case I'm using the recommended SWB arms which come with 440 holes that need to be tapped out for 3 millimeter metric holes in this application. In getting your servos ready to install on the wings you will need two extensions. One 24 inch extension on the outboard servo and one 12 inch extension on the inboard servo. You can find these parts grabbers at auto parts stores and they are great for fishing servo leads through wings. After you've pre-drilled the holes for the servo screws, I like to use a little bit of thin CA on the tip of the servo screws to set the threads into the wood as you put them in. Here I'm making the push rods for the ailerons. All four of them use the same titanium push rod. It's important to note that one side is threaded to the right and the other side is threaded to the left. This makes the link adjustable with it on the aircraft without removing one end of the ball links.
There are several ways to mix four aileron servos together. In this application, I am mixing them directly in the radio. After you're confident with your mixing or your matching, it's time to connect the inboard control horn and leave the outboard one disconnected at this time. With the outboard push rod disconnected, it's time to set the mechanical limits of the inboard servo. Once you've set the up and down mechanical limits, you want to find out which direction has the least amount of throw. Then you will want to set the up and down travel to that distance. Save that measurement for the other aileron as well. Before we connect up the final push rod, we want to verify that our mixing is doing its job and there's going to be no binding of the aileron servo once it's connected. The modern servos we're using on these planes these days have enough power to rip one of those control horns right out of the ailerons. And let's make one final test to make sure there's no binding through the whole range of movement of the servos. Moving on to the stab now, it's important to note that because of the stab tube, the first three hinges in the elevator are cut short on the stab side. The other three are full length. This is a short one. Following the exact same procedure used in hinging the ailerons to the wing, we are going to hinge the elevator to the staff. After the hinges have dried, it's time to cut out the hole in the bottom of the stab for the servo arm. And as with everything else, go over every joint that you can get to with NCA.
No matter how good you are cleaning up the epoxy, after 24 hours of drying, there will still have been some in there. Now's a good time to go back through with alcohol, clean it up one more time, and put one more drop of oil on the hinge knuckle. It's important to note that that slot right there is the slot that the servo lead goes through when you install the elevator servo. Depending on your setup, you may need to widen the elevator servo arm slot. To install the elevator servo arm, first you want to electronically center the servo. Then install the servo arm 90 degrees to the servo. Make sure that it moves in the correct direction and is sub trim properly. Install the output arm screw with blue Loctite. And finally tighten the clamping portion of the servo arm. With the elevators I am setting maximum mechanical throw up and down. I will match them together later after they are put on the aircraft. The last step with the stabs and the wings is to go over the covering one more time with a heat gun and an iron, clean them up with Windex, and put them away until later. Thank you for watching. Please proceed to build video 2.